Good morning, everyone. We'll get started in, in a few minutes, but um, for those that have logged in, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be going through the best practices for running your digital out of home campaign. So to do this, uh, we are going to uh, get a live look at the Broadside Ads platform, um, and we'll look at a couple of examples of ways that we can build uh, a really comprehensive, really strong, really smart out of home campaign uh, using a self serve tool that is Broadside Ads. So we'll wait just a couple minutes to get um, give everyone a chance to log in. Uh, in the meantime. Um, I'm going to be going through a, a bit of information. I'll give you a background of, of Broadside Ads and where it came from and um, some of the backstory. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please use the, the Q&A feature found in this Zoom window. Um, and then we'll uh, save some of those for the end uh, where we can go through some, some questions and answers and, and give you an opportunity to um, ask some further stuff. Okay, so we'll just give everyone a couple of minutes to log in. Okay, so it's 11.02 Eastern time. Uh, I think we'll get started. So again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Adam Kahansky, and I'm the Director of Business Development for North America uh, at BroadSign. So I'm um, really excited and happy to be speaking with you all today. Um, so we're gonna go through some best practices for running a digital out of home campaign using the BroadSign Ads platform. Um, Broadside Ads, uh, it's its not a new platform, but it's certainly a new name. So for those of you who have been following Broadside along our journey, uh, you've probably heard of the Campsite platform. Well, we recently rebranded uh, with the goal of unifying all of Broadside's products under the, the Broadside name. Um, in terms of where I've come from, I was actually a part of the, the original Campsite team uh, out of Canada. So it's bittersweet for me because um, I've been with Campsite since 2018. So to go from an independent DSP to joining the Broadside family to um, rebranding the campsite name to Broadside Nads uh, is really fun. And it's been really cool to be a part of that journey. And I appreciate you for joining me on this journey as well. So to get started, um, again, quick housekeeping, Q&A, please. If you have any questions, uh, just populate that, in, uh, that box and we will uh, get to them um, as the um, session goes on. So let's look at broadside ads. The window that you're looking at now uh, is the uh, essentially the, the campaign building or proposal building tool that we have in broadside ads. So if you log into our platform, uh, click on the new campaign button, then you're gonna be uh, brought to this uh, section essentially. So when you log in, Right now, we're looking at the United States Exchange. You're going to get a look of the entire country and every single screen that we have access to uh, in the United States as of right this moment. So let's just say, you know, we have a product. We know what we want to sell. Uh, maybe we have an audience. Uh, maybe we have a screen preference. You're going to be able to use uh, that information and, and, and make your selections in terms of how you want to build this campaign specifically. Um, you absolutely have the option. Uh, to target the entirety of the United States, but let's just assume that maybe you want to um, narrow down your selection and, and really hone in on specific audiences and in specific geographic regions. So just as an example, I thought maybe I'd give us a couple of like pre-built um, ideas that we can stem from. So in this first example, uh, we're going to pretend like we're an electric car uh, or an electric vehicle car manufacturer. And we are going to uh, maybe target people in the state of New York. So what we'll do is we will target New York City by placing a 10 mile radius around the city. Um, but maybe we're OK with spilling into, you know, the eastern area of New Jersey. Maybe we're OK with spilling into that uh, tip of Connecticut that connects with New York. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to adjust our radius so that we can capture audiences and capture a geographic region um, that we're essentially comfortable with. So what I'll do is I'll adjust that radius to 25 miles, but still using you know, the heart of New York City as our ground zero 
uh, and working out from there to reach screens. Something to keep in mind and pay attention to as you're going through the platform and making your, your audience and geographic selection adjustments is this section in the corner here. So as we make changes through our targeting process, these numbers are going to change based on uh, the parameters that you've got in place. So right now, because we have New York City with a 25 mile radius, what this tells me is that we have access to 6,000 venues and a total of 8,000 screens. Okay, so we've got our geotargeting in place. We're, uh, we're a new electric vehicle maker. We want to make sure that we're reaching audiences in the New York state, or I guess the tri-state area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our audience targeting. So just like any other ad campaign, you probably have an age target. You probably have a household income target. And maybe there's some other interests, life stages, or, or intent um, segments that you'd like to layer in as well. So... Because we're an electric vehicle maker, you know, maybe we are gearing towards a specific audience between the ages of, let's say, 25 to 54. So now what's going to happen is Broadside Ads is going to qualify screens that have highly indexed against the age demo that we have selected, okay? Now, because maybe we have some previous research that maybe people... Uh, who generally explore and purchase electric vehicles fall into a higher income bracket. So we're going to select a 75,000K plus um, household income as our targeting segment as well. So I hope you've been paying attention. So we started with 6,000. Now we are down to 1,000. And that's because Broadside Ads has basically decided that, hey, based on the mobile data that we have access to, um, these screens have seen high concentrations of the combined audience target that you're going for. So in this case, it is 25 to 54 and a 75,000K plus household income. But maybe there's more. The great thing about broadside ads and programmatic out of home in general is we give you access to these tools. So the days of uh, blanketing an entire city or, or DMA, um, you know, kind of the, the spray and pray model where you're placing ads all over the place. Um, those days are certainly still around, but they don't have to be. You'll have access to tools to really hone in on your audience and let mobile audience data, um, you know, do the thinking for you versus looking over um, maybe some spreadsheets and, and other historical data that um, you've maybe used in the past. So let's look at the interest and activity section. We want to find something that really pertains to the automotive sector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target both auto enthusiasts and vehicle owners. So again, I hope you were paying attention. We're now down to 900 venues and 1,000 screens. So what we're doing here is rather than saying, hey, you know what, I want to place my ads on billboards and maybe bus shelters and in the subway, what we're doing is we are letting the audience decide, the audience data, pardon me, to decide where we want to run our ads. So kind of like in the online space where you have uh, an audience first strategy or methodology, what's happening is we're basically uh, replicating that input, okay? So we're taking our digital first um, audience targeting mindset, uh, the programmatic mindset where we're happy to target an audience wherever we find them, um, and we're bringing that to the out-of-home space. The one thing that I have to let you know is even though we are taking that digital first mindset, we are still serving ads in the out-of-home space. So one thing that uh, we don't do in the programmatic out-of-home space is we don't dynamically insert ads like we would on a web page, whether it's on our desktop device, uh, our mobile device, uh, whether we're watching you know, a connected television. The ad is still being served to multiple people at once. So instead of saying, hey, a uh, person who you know, we detect you're looking for a vehicle, we're building an index here. So we're always, we always need to remember that although the audience data tells us these are where the screens are that you're most likely to find your audience, we're doing that in the mind frame and knowing that multiple people are going to see this ad. So that's what's really valuable about this way of um, building your campaign and running it is because you're always going to reach more than one person. Um, we're not serving in a one-to-one, -one, it's a one-to-many environment. So that's always something to keep in mind. Okay, so we've got our audience data in place. 
We have our age targeting. We have our household income. We're ensuring that we're finding people that are either auto enthusiasts or vehicle owners. Now let's go down. And just for the record, if you wanted to look at some other targeting segments, um, if you uh, reach out to us to get a login, we'll give you access to play around and, and have a look at some of the different stuff that you do have access to. Okay, so we have our audience targeting in place. Once we get down to the environment section, I know that I said that, you know, the idea is that you can target, um, you know, audience first and letting the detection uh, reach them wherever they are, but that's not the only way. You know, if you have um, some contextual, like um, physical spaces in mind that you think would really make sense for an auto vehicle, uh, electric car uh, manufacturer, uh, we have the power to uh, adjust our uh, screen targeting and ensure that we're only reaching them in places that, you know, we as an advertiser desire. So maybe we want to take out um, government buildings. Maybe we want to take out uh, point of care. Okay. So just to give you an idea, uh, we give you the freedom and flexibility to really make this campaign as perfect uh, as you need it to be. If at any point you're in this experience and you're building your campaign, um, you know, it's great. Obviously, you have access to 700 venues and 800 screens, but like, what are those screens? Um, there's a couple ways that you can explore um, and find out exactly what you're buying or getting access to. Um, you can use the map and zone in on these clusters of different screens. As you zone in, it kind of behaves like an Airbnb type of experience where, um, you know, as you zoom in, you will see the clusters disperse. So just to give you an idea, we'll get in real close. If you click on each individual one, you'll get to actually see uh, what venue you're targeting here. So everything that's lit up in blue, obviously is something that you are targeting. Uh, something that's in gray is something that we aren't targeting because the audience data that we have access to has basically told us that, you know, this isn't a specific venue, but we have found a high concentration of the audience that you are trying to reach right now. But of course, when you're in this experience, you don't want to click on 800 or 700 different pins. Uh, if we click on the see details button on the left side here, we'll be able to give you an entire list of everything that you've targeted based on the parameters that you've entered in. So as you can see, it's a handful of office towers naturally in, in the uh, New York area. So you can either scroll through this list and see what screens um, that are populating this list of 700, or if it's easier for you to pull it to uh, an, or export it into a CSV file, an Excel file, simply click on this button and this will start a download for you to, to get a different look. Maybe there's going to be a scenario where you're like, hey, you know what? I like the idea of convenience stores, but maybe the 111 Food Market Corp uh, isn't for me. Um, well, we also give you the freedom to individually remove um, venues as well. So if we click on that button, we have lost the 111 Food Market Corp location. Okay, so moving on, we've got our geo targeting set in place. Now, some tips and tricks for you. Maybe this is a, a, um, a strategy that you'd like to replicate. Maybe New York City isn't the only geographic region that you want to run this campaign. A really handy little feature that we have so that you don't have to go through this process for every different market is we have the ability to save this audience. So when you click on this little button here, what's going to happen is we are going to save everything that we've done that is essentially above where that save as audience selection is. So what's gonna happen is that if you go to start either another line order or another campaign, we'll be able to load this previously saved audience. So we'll call this electric vehicle audience targeting. So, to carry on with the theme of best practices, in my experience, I find that the greatest way to reach your audience and your target and make sure your campaign is as clean as possible is separating your geographic regions by line order. So in this case, we have New York, New York, obviously, and, and portions of the tri-state area, but maybe we want to reach 
um, audiences in Chicago. Maybe we want to reach audiences in Los Angeles, maybe Atlanta, so on and so forth. Maybe even Toronto, maybe even Montreal, depending where we're trying to reach. When we click on the save audience, and then load the audience for our next line order, the only edit that we'll have to do is the geographic region, okay? So we will remove New York, and now we will add Chicago. So same experience, same audience targeting, but instead now we are reaching Chicago. So just an easy little way to, um, you know, add a bit of time and efficiency to the campaign building and planning process. Uh, for you to add multiple markets while remaining and, and keeping up with the best practices um, that I've outlined for you. Okay. Let's just go back to New York. Okay, so audience targeting is in place. Geotargeting is in place. Let's look at some other tools that we have access to. We also have access to general points of interest. So beyond just selecting a city or a state, we can actually get down and narrow uh, even more so. So as an example, maybe instead of selecting an entire city, maybe you'd prefer to target maybe um, electric vehicle manufacturer dealerships. So whether it's your own, let's just say we're Chevrolet and we're selling the Chevrolet bolts. Um, we wanna ensure that we are populating as many screens as possible around our Chevrolet dealerships to ensure that anyone who comes within, you know, a one mile radius of our dealership, they know that they can come to our dealership and book a test drive and maybe even purchase a vehicle. On the flip side, we can maybe use this example and target competitors. Maybe we wanna to target Toyota. Maybe we wanna target Honda. To do that, we can add individual addresses here. So if you have an address or, or a grouping of addresses, as you can see up to 250, we can add those in and create the same sort of experience that you see here. So instead of a, a 25 mile radius around an entire city, we can create radiuses that are maybe 500 yards maybe a quarter mile, maybe a half mile, whatever, around multiple different, uh, you know, geotargeting um, parameters. So we can get customized in that fashion, or if we go back to this, the point of interest, um, we have access to a handful of general points of interest. So if you're like, you know what, I just want to make sure that I'm around any car dealership, any maintenance and, rep and repair shop, uh, we can do that as well. So now I'm gonna say, we wanna make sure we're at least around a half mile around car dealerships and maintenance repair shops. So what we're doing in this, this area right now is not only are we adding in this point of interest targeting, we're still keeping in line with the formats that we want. We still have our audience targeting layered in. So we're targeting the auto enthusiasts and vehicle owners, our age, our household income, but we're combining it with ensuring that we're very close to dealerships so that we're giving ourselves the most contextual um, experience for our audiences that we reach. We can also target by specific publishers. You know, maybe um, if anyone on the call is based in the New York area, you really like the idea of those clear channel billboards or you really love uh, those intersection, um, you know, street level panels. What we can do is we can isolate screens by a specific publisher. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'll remove our targeting. So right now we're only isolating intersection screens in this case. So you can see the, uh, the volume of that that we have in the New York City area. Maybe you wanna isolate clear channel as well. So uh, lots of different ways that you can use uh, the functionality found in Broadside Ads to target your audience. You can also select screens based on format. Maybe you already have your creative ready and you're like, hey, you know what, we only have video, we don't have static images. 
what we can do is we can select video and it'll isolate all screens um, that accept video and then vice versa with images who don't accept video. As you can see, a lot of them accept both, but there are some um, asterisks in place where we don't, we can't play video on certain outdoor screens. Okay, moving on, maybe you wanna add um, uh, some sort of triggering to your, um, your campaign. You know, maybe our ads really stand out when the local weather is rainy. What this will do is this will trigger ads in the marketplace when the um, forecast in that marketplace uh, meets this condition. So it's rainy or there's thunderstorms, that means our ads will only run when that condition is met. Maybe on the flip side, we want to ensure we only run when it's sunny. Maybe that's better for our brand and better for our creative message. Uh, we can do that as well. We can also adjust for temperature. We can even adjust for destination weather. Maybe we want to, we want to play ads when it's sunny and warm in Los Angeles. We can do that as well. On top of that, we have access to different financial market related um, triggers as well. Something really unique and it's been, has certainly caught on in the marketplace, uh, and I'm sure everyone in this call is experiencing right now, is the cost of gas. If I'm an electric vehicle car manufacturer, I certainly think I should be playing off of how um, expensive gas is for, for the everyday um, you know, car owner. So let's look at some of the different commodities we have access to. Oh, look, we can serve ads in the marketplace based on the cost of crude oil. So maybe if I'm thinking about my creative messaging as an additional layer on top of our audience targeting, on top of our uh, point of interest targeting, you know, we can add a little side tactic that says, hey, you know what, we have a creative message that speaks directly to the cost of crude oil. Um, that's in relation to gas prices. So I'm gonna add a layer of targeting that um, gives us the ability to add that contextuality to the marketplace and even speak to uh, some of the struggles that um, you know, car owners are experiencing right now with the cost of gas and you know, cheekily reminding them that electric vehicles don't need a fill up. So lots of really cool different things you can play with uh, in the Broadside Naps platform uh, to really you know, combine the different functionalities to make your campaign as cool and as neat as possible. Okay, so when it comes down to the end here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our schedule. This is the easy part. We're gonna place our budget. We're gonna set our max bid CPM. So if our effective bid range is between $6 and $14, maybe I'm comfortable with placing a max bid of 15 because I wanna ensure that I'm getting every opportunity to win inventory and place my ad in the marketplace. So with that said, with a $250,000 budget, we're going to reach at least 513 million impressions. Down at this section, you're going to have the different creative specs and screen sizes that you'll need to upload. So you don't have to do that right away. If you don't have creative ready and you want to ensure you have your plan and strategy in place, just skip this part and then we can go and save as a proposal. Look at that. We have our campaign or a proposal dashboard. Okay, let's look at one more example. Let's say we are a CPG company. Uh, we have uh, products that we sell in grocery stores. We have a promotion going on where, I don't know, there's buy one, get one free or 50% off. We wanna ensure that we are driving customers to the stores that we are sold in. So if we think about some of the options and, and tactics that I spoke about um, in the last example, a lot of those can be replicated. So instead of adding car dealerships, for example, maybe we can add the addresses to Walmarts and um, other grocery stores where my product is sold. So same idea, 
have the grocery store addresses and we can do it here. So this is where you would add, you know, customized audiences, right? So the Walmarts, uh, the Walgreens, the um, Piggly Wigglies, even whatever grocery store your product is sold at, you'll be able to access it uh, and place the customized point of interest through here. Alternatively, if we go back to our generalized point of interest, maybe we'll use a mile. We can select just a more general supermarket and grocery store targeting. Okay, so in Illinois and in Ohio and in Indiana and Michigan, um, we have targeted 4,000 screens that are found within one mile of a supermarket or grocery store. Maybe our product is consumable. So we're not gonna really target an age because this is for everyone and we wanna ensure we're reaching as many people as possible. But maybe we wanna ensure that we're over-indexing in parents because maybe this is a great product for both uh, uh, children but also for the whole family. Maybe it's good for children's lunches, who knows? But just an idea to give you, um, you know, different ways where you can target and reach your audiences. Maybe this is specifically designed for outdoor. Maybe like, you know what? We want this to be as mass reach as possible. We only wanna target outdoor screens. So we wanna ensure that we are only on billboards. We can do that as well. Hey, look, we actually have screens inside grocery stores. So let's double up our efforts. Okay. So 300 screens, 300 venues, we are in good shape. We'll call this CPG food promotion. Okay, so as you can see, because we're targeting outdoor, we're targeting obviously different geographic regions, this is always going to change. A handy trick to get to keep your mind um, or to keep your eyes on here is, although there's a lot of different sizes, we actually show you how many screens um, are associated to each size. Um, I'm not a designer, but I do understand that building creative is time and costly. So um, this is really handy if you are, um, you know, looking at that uh, from a business perspective and and trying to decide, okay, you know, what is the most important sizes I can build? Um, use this as a sort of your ace of spade in case you need to make any decisions. Okay, so we can spend $970,000 based on the parameters that we have in place. Maybe we'll spend 50, we'll achieve 6.2 million impressions. We'll save as a proposal. Okay, so that was one example, but I hope that was helpful as a thought starter. I think what we'll do now is I'll go back to our slides and show you some cool examples that different brands or a different brand um, really leverage the strength of broadside ads um, in an effort to drive ROI. So go back to this page here, go back to our slideshow. So we ran a campaign with Samsung um, in Q4 of last year, so around um, the holiday time. Um, and what they were able to do is they were able to use the strength of the broadside ads platform uh, in the geographic region of Texas um, to really drive brand awareness and store visits to uh, engage with users to um, get them to, you know, consider buying a new Samsung uh, mobile device. So in this case, the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So what we did was we uh, ran a substantial campaign in the outdoor space. We targeted mainly outdoor, um, high impact outdoor places. Uh, we used audience targeting to target tech and gadget enthusiasts. Uh, and we also did a, um, a sequential strategy with a mobile partner to measure um, other uh, um, conversion-based metrics. 
So if we take a look at the results, it was incredibly positive. So 50% of exposed audiences recalled seeing the ads, 80% found the ads likable. That's always a good sign. Uh, and 67% said the campaign gave them a more favorable opinion of Samsung. So all really, really strong uh, and really um, uh, a good testament to the strength of out of home uh, and, and why everyone on this call, if you aren't already considering it to add to your media mix, but not just out of home itself, but leveraging the tools that programmatic offer to give you the best opportunity to drive a successful campaign. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, how do I get access to brought down ads? This was really cool. Um, I ask you to scan that QR code on the left. By scanning that, it will bring you to our landing page, broadsign.com slash ads. And from there, you will be able to, uh, you know, click on a button, send us a quick note, ask for either a demo, a login, and uh, someone from the Broadsign team will be happy to uh, help you out and get you started. If you're like, that all sounds great, but I don't really have experience in out of home, or I do have experience in out of home, but programmatic is super new to me. I need help. That QR code on the right is for you. So the QR code on the right is uh, what you'll see is DoX. So DoX is a comprehensive, um, not just out of home, but also programmatic out of home certification program. Um, it'll take about four to five hours in length. But the good thing is, is that um, you've got three months to finish it. So don't feel like you have to take a day off from work to get this done. Um, it's so valuable and our partners are so happy that we have shared this with them because it's, you know, I think the biggest thing that I've experienced in my four years working in the digital out of home space, uh, obviously in the programmatic space, is that education is a must. And I can't think of a better way to get you started than to um, take that course. So um, with that, I think we will go to Q&A. Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay, so it looks like there's none so far. Oh, here they're coming in, okay. Okay, Lise, what is the max creative size? The max creative size is 250 megabytes. If you're uploading video, it'll be um, in an MP4 format. If it is a static image, we accept JPG or PNG. Uh, will this deck be available? Clarence, yes, I'd be happy to share this with anyone and everyone who requests it. Um, if you would like to connect with me directly, please do. Uh, my name is Adam Kahansky. Uh, so it's first.last at broadtime.com. And maybe what I'll do is I'll share the screen again just so you can get that um, um, jotted down. How quickly can my campaign be live? Um, pretty quick. So what time is it now? It's 11.33 Eastern time. Uh, if you went through that process that I just showed you and you had your creatives ready, uh, you'd be live after lunchtime. Uh, is there any best practices regarding the creatives image versus text ratio? Yes, there are some details, um, probably too many to name now, um, but we can certainly get you connected with best practices to ensure that you are um, certainly taking the best um, or getting the best out of your creative in conjunction with the screen that you're serving it on. Is it more expensive to buy via your platform versus directly with publishers? Um, it can be, it can be. Um, you're getting access to a lot of different tools, um, but there's so many different publishers uh, and there's so many different types of screens and there's so many different prices. So um, it, 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 it can't be answered with a, with a, with a blanket answer, um, but it will really come down to what your needs and what your goals are uh, compared to a campaign that you're trying to run. Is there a minimum spend requirement? No. If you've got 20 bucks, go ahead, Zara. Is there a way to exclude certain screens if I don't want to appear in bathrooms, for example? Yes, absolutely. Um, so 
Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I know that bathroom screens exist primarily in the restaurant and bar uh, environment. So, I mean, the easiest way would be to deselect that environment specifically. Um, if there are environments or sorry, if there are venues or screens in restaurant bars that aren't in the washrooms, then I think the best way for us to kind of narrow down so we're taking advantage as best as possible while removing ourselves from maybe undesirable uh, areas of the venue is open a discussion with the screen owner uh, and allow them to build us a, a, a deal, so a private deal that excludes bathroom screens while including some screens that are in the more common area. Good question, Julie. Uh, what countries are we in? We are available in the United States, in Canada, and Australia. And we are going to be uh, launching our product in many more countries to come in 2022, as well as 2023. Uh, do you offer managed service? We absolutely do. So even though this is a self-serve platform, um, you know, our goal is to uh, slowly bring you into the space and get you comfortable because it's easy. I'm sure you guys all saw that as I was going through. Um, the goal for us is to, you know, help you uh, and go arm in arm with you throughout the process. So maybe start with a managed service type of, um, you know, partnership, turn that into an hybrid, uh, a hybrid so that we can get you more and more comfortable working in the platform and eventually uh, let you spread your wings and fly um, once we get to the point where we're happy. So why broadside ads DSP versus working with one of your omnichannel DSP partners? It's really, um, it's really up to you. Um, you know, if you are experienced in the programmatic space uh, and you're happy working with, let's say, the Trade Desk or Yahoo or um, who knows what else, that's okay. Really what Broadsign's goal is to ensure that you as the advertiser gets access to all of the screens made available in the general marketplace. Uh, we'll give you a DSP like Broadsign ads to, to allow you to transact and build your campaign. But if you prefer to use an omnichannel DSP, uh, we'll ensure that uh, both you and that DSP has everything they need to run a successful campaign. Good questions, everyone. So it looks like that is all for now. Before I go, I'll maybe just go back to my homepage to ensure you get my first and last name if you want to shoot me an email. So again, it's first.last at broadsign.com. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. And if you would like to learn more, I will go to this last page to give you access to those QR codes one last time. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, I hope that you learned something today um, and I look forward to hearing from you and working with you and getting your programmatic home campaigns uh, launched and in the marketplace. Bye for now.